Besides boxing, you know? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's look at a way to overall enhance your martial arts, from your self-defense, to your fitness, to your fighting. And what's cool about it, all you're going to need is yourself and a little bit of space. This is shadow boxing. We're actually going to change the term to shadow fighting since we're going to do a lot more than just boxing. This is James Cox with Premier Martial Arts in Abilene, Episode 7, Shadow Fighting. Shadow fighting is very valuable, but at the same time, it can be very complicated and very difficult for a beginner to do because they're basically freestyling. They're just going and creating techniques and combinations as they go. I really look at shadow fighting as an act of meditation. So if you think of a way of connecting the mind, the body, and the spirit, as well as just simply developing confidence and combinations, let me show you more what shadow fighting is, and let's break it down into steps so that you're able to succeed. We know that we get better with practice. The more you do things, the better you get at them. So we want to hardwire in our martial art techniques and, again, combinations that we know that are our combinations. Remember, you're a martial artist, which is a creative individual. Shadow fighting can be a great workout. So you imagine the cardio. You know, I look at shadow fighting for the MMA concept or more evolved modern martial art, almost as a comparison to traditional martial arts that do kata, forms or pattern, which is the imaginary movements where you're visualizing what's going on. There's a lot of benefits in kata, but as well that's a different debate for a different video today we're talking about shadow fighting shadow fighting is a great way to get your cardio as well as really kind of visualize pretend what's going on and just be there before I'll show you what I'm talking about inch by inch is a cinch yard by yard is just too hard what I mean is that the complexity of shadow boxing is mainly because people try to do too much at once. You need to build your steps. You need to start with A to go to B. You need to start with one to go to two, right? So the first thing that you should try to understand, and I'm not really teaching you all the martial arts skills, I'm just teaching you to get comfortable with shadow fighting by breaking it down one thing at a time. Well, priority number one is to have a good stance. You know, mimicking more for MMA overall or it can be cross to boxing, kickboxing, etc. We want to have hands up, elbows in, chin, shoulders, feet, balance, minimize targets. So once you're in a good stance, step number two, let's learn how to move. So from your step drag, to angles, to rhythm, to duck walk, just keep the feet in a good position where you're not crossing or sacrificing, compromising for a bad position. Your movement is the best way to get you in and out faster and stronger. Once you have your stance, you have some smart movement, then what I would do is shadow box around what is a round? A round could be 15 seconds, a round could be five minutes, you know, it's all about you. But shadow box a round of just maintaining a stance with some smart, intelligent movement. The next thing you want to add is your hands, you know. Start with your number one punch. So you start with a good jab. As you start with the jab, you start adding your cross. You slowly build your boxing combinations. You have a stance, you know how to move. And just throw one punch at a time. At the end of the day, straight punches are better punches. So you can't go wrong with just stopping and maybe throwing a one, two, one, two, which is four straight punches. As you're in your stance, you move. Then you start finding unders and overs and letting your hands go. And if your art dictates it, then next we start adding the kicks. I would start with lead leg so that I know from here I start adding lead kicks. Then your kicking combinations, which will go along with the hand. You got to build combinations, you know, simple combinations, picks from the opposites, how a jab sets up, a round kick, a cross sets up, a kick and then just start putting together more combinations. It's so easy to find combinations that work. Practice them. And then you want to slowly but surely start putting things together, starting with one move at a time and building combinations. What I really like about shadow fighting as well is it's a chance to learn more about yourself as a martial artist and even as an individual. So I call it self-awareness. You know, you start being aware that you're better on this side, a certain kick, a certain punch, a certain angle work better for you. Remember, at the end of the day, you're the martial artist and you have to learn yourself. In addition, we want to avoid and get rid of any bad habits. What I like as a tool is a mirror. A mirror is there, it's gonna tell you the truth, you know, so it's a chance for you to see. If you don't have a coach that's able to 
coach you and guide you through the right and the wrong things to do, then you start diagnosing yourself on what's going on. You know, a lot of common sense and good basics go a long way. So use a mirror to see if you're dropping your hands, to see if you're turning your punches over, to see if your stance is too wide or narrow, etc. Creativity goes a long way, so be innovative. You know, shadow boxing can be, with some hit training, it can be interval, where in between you're doing push-ups, you shadow box for 20 seconds and you're doing crunches, you shadow box and, you know, as a fighter you're working the falls and the sprawls, which is take down defense or you know putting it all together don't forget variety variety is good what is your long range versus your mid versus your close range and don't forget levels when you shadow box there's no one there but maybe there is someone there because you're visualizing the attacker in front of you maybe you're shadow boxing and visual visualizing multiple attackers so levels are important what I mean by levels is you go high you go mid you go low you know, so be smart with your combinations, almost hypnotized like an artist should be, right? Where you're in the zone and you're concentrating on a variety of things that could happen. Lastly, it's just putting all of the pieces together, you know. There's a way to find the flow and to get in the zone. Remember, it's active meditation, building confidence with your combinations and doing the things that you do well, being yourself. Music can be a great tool for people just to help you connect or disconnect and be where you are and not where you shouldn't.